Guys, welcome back to episode six of The Boat Project, bringing my 24-year-old 16-foot fishing boat back to life. You'll be glad to know this is the last episode where it's not on the water. I'll update you on that shortly. But as you can tell by the title, today's video, bit of a banger, whistle stop tour. So we got a low ranch hook reveal nine, triple shot fish finder to install. If I get time, I've got LED gunnel lights to install and wire in. We've also got a fuel water separator uh, to install as well. So I've got quite a bit to do. <laughs> the sun is setting behind me, so it's a race against time. I'll link all the chapters below if there's just certain sections you're interested in. So it's 8.30 at night and my solar panel is still taking a charge. I don't know if you can see that, you see it flashing in? We're still getting some charge. It's definitely kept my battery topped up. So I went for the Easterner Marine Water Separating Fuel Filter. There's the model number. It says it replaces Mercury, but they universally do any petrol outboard. So I bought new Quicksilver 8 foot Mariner Mercury fuel line, as you can see here. I needed new primer bulbs anyway, so it made sense just to purchase this, start fresh and all. Although I did have to cut it because obviously I'm putting a water separating fuel filter. You can see on the left there, the bulb, so there's a visual aid. And then obviously I've got the this stuff here. You need to put a fuel resistant gasket on it, which I'll show you shortly. But essentially it goes in one side and comes out the other. You've got to run it across the filter. You can put two separate fuel lines in here. Quick trip to the shop first to get some bolts. Didn't really come with any, which is a bit annoying. So stainless steel, that's the setup there. You can see where the hose is going to come in and come out. Put the blue fuel-resistant paste on. There she is. There, there she is, Tom. Tightened up, a bit of mechanical sympathy. Right, drilled my holes, M8, so 8mm. Put it in, siliconed it up, and then connected the hose lines and the corresponding Jubilee clips New fuel line pulled through. There's the drain plug that I was talking about earlier. She's all good, tightened up. Obviously, before you run the engine, you'll want to do a full uh, leak check. So that's it, obviously there's my new connection. Goes to the fuel tank here. I am going to run dual tanks. I've checked it still works. And the second tank I'll run through here as well. As long as it comes in, goes across the filter. You sort it, then my hose line runs down there comes out here. Now there's a lot of discussion about prime and bulb location when you use a fuel filter. Some people say have it between uh, the filter and the tank but I asked a marine uh, engineer and he told me out here is absolutely fine. So there we go. Plenty of room so the engine can still turn and tilt etc. You don't want to leave this too tight. Uh, I'll tidy all that up afterwards. I'd be able to visually see any water in here. If my memory serves me right, water is heavier than fuel so I'll see it in the bottom and then this can just drain it out and what I have done here is uh, I've made it so nothing's going to knock off it, open this up and I can get something underneath still and drain it, which is handy. So just some thoughts on the actual water fuel separator filter, why would I have one? Well I recently found out that one of the main causes for RNLI callouts is um, obviously engine issues related to water in the fuel. Uh, this new E10 fuel is horrific for it so quite made up with that. Hopefully it will save my ass a little bit. So yeah, there she is. There's the new one. The low rance is a beast compared to the old one, which didn't work by the way. So the first thing I had to do was remove the old transducer. Yep, yeah, chipped a bit of the gel coat, taking her off. And looking at it, I don't think it ever been siliconed. Handy, not. So there's a way you work out how these fit. Basically use a straight edge, but I worked that out and it fitted the existing holes. <laughs> now, I did use the Silkaflex 291i on the holes very generously because I don't want to leak into my transom. It wasn't the smoothest job. I cleaned that up afterwards, but yeah, essentially just something to consider with the transducer. Um, there is a housed position that it sits in, but the cable will obviously pull, so make sure you leave enough slack. I've got to put the P-clips on here, which I'll do shortly, but essentially... The way the manual says to work this out is to use a straight edge, run it along the bottom of the boat, and it's supposed to cut the sonar unit in half, so it'll be halfway down. So that should work a dream. Just bear in mind where you put it. I put it here because that's where the old one was, but that your outboard doesn't either impact on it or 
affect the reading. Also got new plugs for the boat. And anyone who's got Warrior 165, there's two plugs in here. They're right sneaky little buggers. Right, first thing we do with the fish finder unit is take it off and then unscrew these three screws and then I'll put the new one on, which is not much of a job really. There you go. There's the new mount, as you can see, she's a lot bigger. The compass is still there as well. And then that's the wire it came with. It's 12 volt accessory connection. So I just use some heat shrinked marine grade connections. And I also like labeling everything up. I've got a bit of OCD, so fault finding is never a problem in the future. If you haven't already seen it, I rewired the boat and explained exactly how my connections work with the uh, panel here and the fuse switch here. So I'll just connect these. So here's the panel. That's the GPS switch there, which corresponds to the power, which I've just put in the middle switch here. Again, go back to refer to that video. You'll know what I'm talking about. And then all I need to do is run the negative up into the uh, switch because it's already fused through the panel. We'll do that now. So there's a negative going on. So we've got the head unit in place now. Looking beautiful. Okay. There's my power cable which runs through the dash, as discussed, let's connect that up, it's got a little nod, notch on it so you can't really put it in wrong. Okay, ignore these two wires, so we've got the cable from the transducer, the sonar unit, and there's the power cable. Let's see if she fires up, shall we? So there we go, look at that, excellent for knowing where the depth is, obviously we've got sonar, um, down scan so we can see these are supposed to be fish there's some weird hook reveal thing um well, mate steady and then a side scan which this is going to be epic for looking at the bottom of the floor uh, of the ocean floor for like shipwrecks etc you can see like shipping containers up here this is obviously in a, a demo mode because we're not in the water but there you go mega excited about that because i've literally just been free diving and uh saw jellyfish and unreal so yeah i'm buzzing with that right on to the next job then quite a comparison next mission is led strip lights went for red green blue because red at night does not affect night vision so in the pack they come with these two five meter reels the ip something rated these are pretty cheap so if they go wrong i'll just replace them adhesive on the back for going around the gunnels um, and then a central controller uh, where both five meters connect into. So there's no soldering, nothing, nothing snazzy required. Uh, this would normally go into a 240 socket. I just snip the socket off and then as you can see, we've got two wires there. One's a positive, one's a negative. Some janky remote control. And uh, yeah, obviously there's the IR receiver there. Aha. So yeah, before I did anything, I wanted to just check uh, they worked and the wiring worked. So that was skeet. All right, mate, do you do other colors? Green, red, blue, white. Gucci. I'm going to put the control unit around here somewhere because I've said before, it's a bit more protective from the elements. And although they say they're waterproof, do I trust them? Negative. So I've glued them on. It's not dark yet, but there's a nice light from it. I ran them around the front here. I did think about running them up here, but the way I've left them, uh, the connector here is that I can extend and run some more along here. Like I say, they're only cheap, so it's not breaking the bank with anything. It's been quite a productive night, hasn't it? Well, the moon's out now, sun is finally set. Good night's work, eh? Like I say, next video should be in the water. I've still got plenty of little tweaks I wanna to do to it. <laughs> I've got this underwater um, propulsion sea scooter, I think it's called, by Yamaha. So when I'm free diving, etc., it'll help me go faster and further and hopefully deeper. Uh, so I've got that to mount that. Uh, I've got my auxiliary engine coming. And uh, I've obviously got my spot on the harbour now confirmed. 
So that's how I know the next video will not be here, it'll be in the water. I'm really made up with this actually for a cheap LED system, which is replaceable. These lights cost me about 10, 10 or 11 pound on Amazon. I'll link them below. So anyway, uh, shout out to a friend of mine, Hambo. He's gonna be joining me on some adventures as well. I know he watches the videos too. So I'm looking forward to getting out with him. He's gonna be doing some free diving with me, some top safety stuff when I'm either in the waters and obviously assisting in the uh, chumming and fishing and everything in between. That thing there, I'm absolutely buzzing with. Such a nicer console. Thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna to go and fire up the engine, check for any leaks in the fuel water system and in the hose clamps, etc. And we're good to go. So I'll catch you on the next one, whatever that may be.